So in this video, we're going to go over floating point numbers. Okay. So what is a floating point number? Well, a floating point number is any number that has a decimal. So 1.357 is a floating point number. The floating point refers to the decimal place. And the issue in computers is how do we represent floating point numbers? We can do integers pretty easily, but how do we do floating point numbers? And there's a standard called IEEE 754, which tells us how we can define a floating point number like this. And there's two versions. There's the 32-bit and the 64-bit version. And we're going to talk about the 32-bit because it's still the most common case. And the 64-bit is just an extension of the 32-bit case. So let's define our field. Since it's a 32-bit number, it says 32-bit standard, we're going to have 32 fields. So let me draw out our fields first. And I'll explain them as we go. This is our sign field. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have an exponent field. And finally, we have a 23-bit. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 23 bit mantissa. And I'm going to write out how many. These are 8. This is 8 bits. And then the sign bit is just 1 bit. All right. So in total, we have 23 bits, so, or 32 bits. 32 bits total. All right. So let's go over uh, the definition of how these fields kind of combine. And we'll do an example just to make this clear. But here is the formal definition. First, we have a positive or negative sign in the front. And that comes from the sign, okay, followed by the mantissa. And we have this implicit one. And we'll talk about this later. If we have a one point, whatever is in the mantissa field, we'll call this M. And it is times 2 to the power of E, which is the exponent, minus 127. So this is the I triple E. 754 definition uh, for a 32-bit float. All right, so let's do an example just to solidify how this process actually works and to kind of clear up these terms, which I think are a bit ambiguous. So let's draw a field set one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And our mantissa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3. 23-bit mantissa, 8-bit exponent field, and a sine bit. So I'm going to make the sine 0. I'm just making up numbers here. Let's make the mantissa 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have one too many bits here. It has to be 8 bits. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then let's say our mantis is just one, zero, 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 zero. All the rest will be zeros. All right. So let's decode what this means. So we're going to start with the sign, and since the sign is zero, uh, sine bit zero, that means we're going to be positive. All right. So positive one dot. So it's one dot whatever is in the mantissa field here. So it's going to be 1.100, 1, and it's going to go on forever here. Uh, it's going to go on for zeros forever, so we're not going to write those in because we're not going to change the value. And it's going to be times 2 to our exponent here, and this is 1, 2, 4, 8. This is 8, so it's 8 minus 127. All right, and let's write that out. That's plus 1.100 times 2, and 127 minus 8 is negative 119. And that's in base two. So that is the that is what these numbers mean. These sets of numbers, these 32 bits, equal this. And this is in base two. So let's convert that to base 10. 
which is what we are used to. And what we have to do is use our notation. So it's 1 times 2 to the power of something. Now, since this is negative 1 times 10, if you think about it, we're moving this decimal place over 119 times. It's, it's exactly the same as in scientific notation in base 10, where we have like 3, and we move this 3 over. Well, we just changed the base here, and we're using base 2, which means we just move the decimal place over. And since we're moving it over negative 119 times, the place value of this one's actually going to be negative 119. Because think about it, if we moved it negative 1 over, then the place value would be negative 1. So it's equal to negative 19. So 2 to the negative 119 plus, this one's going to be negative 120, the place value of this one. So 1 times 2 to the negative 120th. And if we plug that into a calculator, the answer is, in base 10, 2.2569495 times 10 to the negative 36. And that's in base 10. And it's positive because of this sign bit. So let's do one more example. Let's convert, uh, I don't know, base 10 number, let's say point 0.75, and we want to find out what the IEEE 754 representation of point 0.75 is in base 10. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is write our fields out. So let's start out with uh, our sign field, followed by our 8-bit exponent, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Followed by a 23 bit mantis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Alright, so since we're positive, we're going to have a 0 for our sign bit. And now we have to first convert. What is uh, 0.75 in base 10 equal to in base 2? We can use the multiply by 2 method to find that. So 1.5. 1.0, read downward, and we end up with 1, 1, base 2. So we need to put 1, 1 in the mantissa field. Well, we already have 1 right here. You know, there's an implicit 1 right here, 1 point something. So we can leave out one of these ones. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about this other one. So let's put that 1 here, and the rest are just going to be zeros. Right. Now we need to figure out what our exponent field is equal to. And so we know the exponents, the real exponent value is equal to whatever is in the exponent field minus 127. So let's say we know what we want this to be, you know, what is our what does our exponent have to be? Well, since we're starting out with the uh, answer needs to be 0.11, and when we have our implicit one, it's one point whatever is in here. So right now we have 1.1 times 2 to the power of something has to equal this. And that's negative 1. We need to move the decimal place 1 over. So this needs to be equal to negative 1. So negative 1 equals e minus 127. So e is equal to negative 1 plus 127 and e is equal to 126. So we need to put 127, 126 in the magnitude exponent field here and we can figure out um, you know, the binary representation of 126 and we can use the 2 divide by method to figure out the solution to this question. So 2 goes into 126 6, 12, 3, 2 goes into 63, it's actually 1 R1, 1. 2 goes into 31, 1, Two goes into fifteen. Two goes into seven. Three. Two goes into eight. 
2 goes into 3, 2 goes into 1, and then we read upwards. So we're going to end up with 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. All right, so that in base 2 is equal to 126. And then we're going to put this value into our exponent field. So this is going to go here. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. All right. So this 32-bit floating point number is equal to uh, 0.75. So let's talk about a couple other things. One is special cases. There's actually six special floating point cases. And they're not that important, but they are nice to know about. So the first is the zero case. And in the zero case, uh, the zero case solves the problem of how do we represent 0, 0.0 in floating point. I triple E 754 floating point because we have this one implicit, this implicit one point something. You know, there'd be no way to represent what zero is. So the answer um, to that problem is if you have all your fields set to zero, you know, it, the floating point number represents zero. So if you have all your fields set to zero, and the sign bit is actually the only thing that doesn't matter three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So if all these bits are set to 0, then this number is equal to 0. And it actually can equal negative or positive zero depending on the sign bit here. So, okay. So our next set of special cases deals with uh, infinity and negative infinity. And I'm going to write zero or negative zero. So this is two cases. Here's another set of two cases, and. And that relates to when we have the exponent field set to 1. So we can have 1 or 0. So we can have 1 or 0 for our sign bit. If it's 1, it's negative infinity. If it's 0, it's positive infinity. And then our exponent field, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, is going to be all 1s. And our mantissa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, is going to be all zeros. All right? So that's equal to positive, negative, infinity. And you'll see if you're programming in C++ and you run into this case, the typical thing the computer will tell you is INF. If you use Windows Calculator, you'll run into the infinity case. All right. And then we have one more case, and that is the not a number slash negative not a number set of case. This is case 5 and 6, special case 5 and 6. And like the other two, we can have a 1 or 0 for a sign bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Our exponent field this time is all 1s. And our mantissa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, can be anything except all zeros. If it's all zeros, it's infinity or negative infinity. But if there's like a 1 here, it doesn't matter where. We had a couple 1s. Say the rest were zeros or throw in some more ones. It doesn't matter as long as this isn't all zeros. Uh, we have a not a number slash negative not a number.